Part One, Chapter Nine of Short History of the Christian Church by John Fletcher Hurst. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Nine, Abianism and Gnosticism. Christianity was making steady progress in every field. Some of the more advanced thinkers in both Judaism and paganism saw in the Christian system so much that commended itself to universal confidence that each proposed to adapt it to his own faith and philosophy this was a new plan more dangerous to christianity by far than outward opposition in each case the overture was strengthened by people within the christian fold who responded to the flattering proposition though without representing the spirit of the whole body after the council in jerusalem which settled the great pauline principle of the freedom of christian converts from the mosaic law there remained a body of christians who would not accept the conclusion jerusalem was their centre they were of two classes those who saw in christianity the fulfilment of all that was worthy in judaism and those who were more conservative and refused to acknowledge the new faith as the culmination of mosaism out of these two tendencies sprang ebionism it held that the mosaic law was still in force its close observance was a necessity for salvation christianity fulfilled the law but did not abrogate it christ was the prophet of israel's deliverance he was a mere man his generation was natural the divine spirit entered him at baptism christ was a good jew his piety was his claim to messiahship he performed miracles and he supplemented the law by his own commands the ebionites rejected paul's writings as not jewish enough they had communities in asia minor cyprus and in rome and existed down to the fourth century the nazareans more nearly approached christianity they accepted paul's writings and held that christ was the son of god and that his generation was divine they disappeared in the fourth century the alcesaites or sampsians were of similar jewish proclivities but had a stronger oriental element in their faith they kept the jewish sabbath retained sacrifices held that oil and salt were emblems of spiritual communication and prayed with their faces towards the sun the gnostic system was a combination of the new platonic philosophy with oriental theosophy the two proposing to appropriate certain christian elements philo a learned jew of alexandria born about b c twenty furnished the most decided contribution he aimed to unite judaism and platonism he regarded god and the world as forming a dualism both finite and infinite he believed that god could not assume visible form but can reveal himself to the soul the logos was a divine emanation which the holy spirit the divine wisdom imparted directly to the first men and to all who have since striven after likeness to god from the fundamental ideas of philo the great gnostic system developed into special systems but all of them were strained accommodations to christian ideas Cerinthus, A.D. 100, was the earliest representative of the Jewish form of this strange philosophy. He held that Judaism was the world's preparation for Christianity, that Jesus was the natural son of Joseph and Mary, and arrived at his pure state at baptism and by his holy life, that his death was not a mediatorial service, but that he would come again and establish a vast earthly kingdom basilides taught in alexandria about a d one thirty he held that the universe is a dualism deity and matter between these there is a great multitude of eons or emanations from god who record his glory and make it fruitful each nation is ruled by an eon the jewish eon taught by means of moses and the prophets but truth was universal greeks jews and persians shared it the highest eon was accorded to jesus at his baptism basilides was cautious not committing himself to any of the extremes which constituted the body of the gnostic system valentinian 
a d one thirty eight first taught at alexandria but afterwards removed to rome he was at first a christian but withdrew from the church he borrowed his chief ideas from plato his fundamental doctrine was emanation the supreme god lives in silence and solitude but to be perfect he must love and in order to love there must be an object so he began to emanate the eons are personalities which emanate from him man the logos and the church are divine emanations man is redeemed through the logos the crucifixion represented the divine might by which the world is purified from sin valentinian was the founder of the largest gnostic school his chief disciples were heraclion ptolemaeus and bardesanes the ophites serpent worshippers were the first of this class they existed as a small sect in egypt at the time of christ and afterwards adopted a perverted type of christianity but retained a large measure of oriental theosophy the pleroma or highest spirit develops itself in eons and from the fourth one there floats a ray of light which combines with matter and becomes the world soul man is created to defeat his elevation the serpent is prepared the serpent becomes the type of all wisdom and is worthy of worship man by his fall first arrives at the consciousness of freedom and mastery there were two minor ophite sects the canites and the sethians carpocrates built his system out of fragments of buddhism and neoplatonism he placed all faiths on the same plane orpheus pythagoras plato and christ were quite the same according to him his sect denigrated into wild libertinism in mani and the manichaeans we reach the limits of oriental gnosticism mani made the faith of zoroaster the basis of his system but added a superstructure of buddhism and christianity fatalism pervaded the whole structure the sect continued down to the end of the third century when diocletian issued an edict for its suppression the ophites elevated man to supreme importance their estimate has been characterized in the following lines o thou citizen of heaven thou much praised man from thee comes father through thee comes mother those two immortal names the parents of the eons saturninus who died about a d one seventy four held that the supreme father has produced by intermediate archangels and powers seven angels who are the sovereigns of the material world among them is the god of the jews man was created but with infirmities the saviour came to aid him towards final development tatian was a native of assyria but emigrated to rome his chief tenet was antagonism to marriage he died in a d one seventy four the anaritites and hudopastrians were followers of tatian the tendency to decline was manifested in all the gnostic schools marcion who lived about a d one fifty and his followers represented the reformatory movement he avoided all the extremes of his predecessors but leaned towards christianity he recognized paul as the only veritable apostle admitted one gospel a distortion of luke and rejected all tradition and esoteric doctrines in his later years he is said to have regretted his gnostic vagaries and to have sought readmission to the church of all gnostics he was the nearest approach to the true christian the service which gnosticism rendered to the church was to make the pagan mind acquainted with some fundamental christian truths to disintegrate the fabric of the pagan philosophy and to prove by its own fruitless endeavors the impossibility of combining any system with christianity it also stimulated to theological investigation and to the study of the scriptures basilides and heraclion were the first to comment upon the whole gospels gnosticism helped towards the elevation of the bishops and to a higher regard for the rites and doctrines received from the apostles the gnostics were a proud class 
they set out with claims to all knowledge approached christianity as they would any other faith and proposed to weigh it in their own small balance they made reason the test of religion and were devoid of all appreciation of the spiritual life the danger to christianity of all the gnostic systems was in winning christians to the adoption of them but the christian teachers were prompt in giving warning of their dangerous nature and no great secession to them ever occurred the christians as a body regarded the gnostics with aversion because of the claim of many of them that they believed in the best part of christianity while marcion was the nearest approach to the christian the interview of polycarp with him one day as the two met in a street in rome indicates the christian hostility to all gnostics polycarp was stopped by marcion who said do you not recognize me the father replied promptly certainly i do i know the first-born of satan End of chapter nine